When you're working with a wireless network, you have to remember that this is all radio waves. And anything that can create problems for your radio waves are going to create problems for your wireless network. There's all types of places where interference and problems might come from. And you have to consider all of those when you're troubleshooting the network. Some interference, of course, can be avoided. Before you even bring up your wireless network, you might do a site survey and determine if other wireless networks happen to be there so that you can avoid those channels. So you need to make plans before you start to implement this to make sure that there's not going to be anything to cause any problems for us. Of course, there are some things that are completely out of your control. If you're in a very large building, you may not have a lot of wireless signals available that you could choose from. You may have to coexist with other people that might be in that facility. And of course, the frequencies themselves don't belong to you. In the United States, they're managed by the Federal Communications Commission. And there are other parts of those frequencies that might overlap with other services. For instance, the amateur radio service has access to some of the same 2.4 gigahertz frequencies that you might run into on a wireless network. And if they want to use those frequencies, and even if they disrupt your network, they're still allowed to because they're the primary user of some of those frequencies. So situations like that might be very delicate. You have to think about how you might want to manage the wireless network if you run into some of those issues. When we think about problems that might occur with our signal issues, a very common one, of course, is interference. We might have things that are interfering with the same frequencies that we're using for our wireless network. And if we need to troubleshoot, we need to find those sources of interference and shut them down. We also need to think about signal strength. We have the signal that's being transmitted from our access point. We have the receiving antenna that's on our systems. And of course, the transmitting antenna of our laptops and the other devices that are using that wireless network. Every single one of those has an impact on the signal strength itself. We have to also think about the channels that we're using. Of course, in a wireless network, you have a number of channels that you can use. And occasionally, you'll have a system that has been manually configured to use the incorrect channel. And they're either getting very poor performance or they're getting no throughput, no connection at all. So that's another type of signal issue we have to keep in mind. In our wireless networks and the frequencies that we're using, we also have to think about bounce and latency. Some of the very flat objects that we might have, walls and other things in our environment, might create problems where the signal is bouncing off of those. And we might see latency as it's being received by a central antenna. You have this idea of multi-bounce interference, where the signal is suddenly arriving at the access point, but it's arriving at different times. And that can create a problem for the access point to hear properly. Those flat surfaces can create an issue. And there may be some things we can do from an architectural perspective to avoid the bounce and avoid these types of multipath problems. We might also have issues where the access point was originally installed in the wrong place. It just needs to be moved somewhere else. And that will certainly help and modify what our signal is doing if we move the access point antennas from one place to another. One of the things that you'll want to do to minimize this interference is find all of those possible sources. And maybe it's somewhere that's a fluorescent light, or it's a cordless phone, or perhaps a microwave. And we can test those and see what type of interference we might have. Of course, in multi-tenant environments, as we have mentioned earlier, you may not have a lot of control over exactly where the interference is coming from. So you might want to grab a computer and look at the signal strength meter or have an idea of performance across that wireless network. And we may want to take that portable device and move it around to see what we can change with the throughput and the performance of our wireless network. In extreme cases, we might want to invest in some hardware and software that might give us a view like this, a spectrum analyzer that's able to look across the entire frequency range and show us at a glance exactly where those wireless signals are and exactly where the interference is. And visually, we can pick out the best place for our access point to go. Using some of these tools and using some common sense, we can then avoid some of these major sources of interference and have the best wireless signal possible.